All right, Shalom. 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 First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Uh, this class is going to be going into Isaiah, the 48th chapter, and uh, pretty much it's going to be highlighting Israel's um, hard headed nature and the Most High's uh, solution to that. You know what I mean? And so uh, this is pretty much an admonishment chapter. And uh, an eye opener, you know, for for Israel, this message was uh, going out during the um, Assyrian Empire, pretty much, uh, you know, gaining power. Eventually it took over the, the northern kingdom. But, uh, you know, Isaiah was dwelling in the southern kingdom. And so he was a contemporary with uh, Micah as well as uh, the prophet Hosea. So we can uh, go ahead and get started in in uh, verse one. Con, this is Isaiah chapter 48, verse one. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of Yahweh, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, mm -hmm. nor in righteousness. Right. So it says they're called by uh, the name of Israel and come forth out of the waters out of the waters of Judah. So this is, of course, addressing Israel. Right. Which most of the uh, scriptures are. But it says. Um, they make mention of the Most High, but not in righteousness. Can we get Jeremiah 5 and 2, Bible for sure? Fine. Jeremiah 5 and 2. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Mm -hmm. o, Lord, o Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Right. So you have a lot of, you had a lot of Israelites, and you do to this day, but at that time you had Israelites that were, you know, pretty much um, being raised in the customs, right? And like Jeremiah, I mean, uh, Isaiah, <clears throat> Isaiah, the first chapter talks about, you know, the ox know is the owner, his ass is master's crib, but Israel do it not know and do not consider, you know, again, they were, you know, raised in, in Jerusalem or in the, you know, neighboring cities, but they were constantly going off, sacrificing to other gods. And this uh, chapter will go into that, you know, and pretty much they weren't uh, worshiping the most high in sincerity and in truth, you know. When you read in the NLT in this uh, in this verse, the last part, uh, it's, it mentions how um, uh, Jacob doesn't keep their promises. You know? And that's so in Jeremiah or Isaiah. In uh, in Isaiah, the, okay. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it in uh, in the NLT. This is okay. Isaiah, okay. Isaiah 48 and one. It says, "Listen to me, O family of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Israel and born into the family of Judah. Listen, you who take oaths in the name of Yahweh." And call on the God or the power of Israel. You don't keep your promises. And so, you know, again, we were, we made an oath to Yahabashim Yasha, everything that, you know, was written in the law that we would follow them. And this is acknowledging that, you know, Israel was found wanting and uh, coming up short in their, you know, their end of the, uh, the agreement. I got to appreciate it. Kind. Uh, Zephaniah chapter one verse four. The point is in verse five. It says, "I will stretch out. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the Chimurim, uh with the priest. And the Chimurim are just like the idolatrous priest of Baal, pretty much. It says, "And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by Yahweh, and that swear by Malcolm or Molech." If mm -hmm. you will. So pretty much he's saying, like, those who swear upon my name and say, you know, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, who call upon my name, I'm going to cut those people off that are saying my name, but really on, on the back burner, they still worshiping idols. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So, like, you know, laying back and off the precept back there in uh, Jeremiah, the, uh, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. the second verse, and though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Right. We see that spirit very heavy in the nation of Israel today. A lot of Jake's calling on the name of Yahweh and everything, but really deep down. They're fulfilling the works of their flesh. Yep, absolutely. What's that script they talking about? They worship me with their mouth, but Isaiah, Isaiah 29. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and and you know it's gonna keep going into it until you get to about verse uh, seven. So we can continue reading in Isaiah forty-eight. Did you want to finish Jeremiah five? Oh, I thought you finished the slacking. Uh, no, nah, I didn't finish the third verse. Okay. I didn't know what, what point you want to get. But uh, really, verse two was the point, but you can, two? yeah, okay. no, you can, you can finish the verse though. You yeah, can read verse okay. two and verse three because I started reading the first part of verse three, so I'll finish it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Jeremiah five and two. It says, "And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely." Right, because when you say the Lord liveth, basically you acknowledging that He exists, but you not your actions aren't mm -hmm. you know pretty much following through with what you're saying. 
Right. You know? This is Isaiah 48 and 2. Oh, so are you, are you going to finish that? Nah, that's cool. We okay, okay, okay. On, okay. Cool. I ain't going to I'm just letting you finish it. That was, it. That was just the yeah. verse 2, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is Isaiah 48 and 2. For they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. Right. Um, you got that mic? Somebody got Micah 3 and 10? Yeah. Okay. This is Micah chapter 3 and 10. It says, they build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. <clears throat> the heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire. Mm -hmm. And the prophets therefore divine for money. Mm -hmm. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? Right. So they pretty much are so there's pretty much sold out man mm -hmm. you know again it was it was a uh, kind of like uh when the most high mentioned that he has no pleasure in our sacrifices mm -hmm. you know because we were sacrificed to just imagine if you had a you know it, you know if you had a woman you know and she doing her own thing with a with another dude but she but she want to call herself your wife like you're gonna you're gonna cast her away you know and that's pretty much how the most High looked at the situation you know they they uh you know, were openly, openly uh, 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 disobeying the Most High, man. You know, did you finish verse eleven? It says, and it says, yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, "Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us." Mm -hmm. Therefore right. shall Zion, for your sakes, be plowed as a field, mm -hmm. and Jerusalem shall become heaps. And the mountain of the house of the high places of the forest. Right. So pretty much they were they were making the argument that oh you know we worship the Most High, but really they weren't. They were they were, they were uh, worshiping Him in tongue, but not in deed and act. You know. And so um, when you go back in verse in verse two, you know, I kind of look at, look at the NIV on uh, on it as well. It says in Isaiah forty eight and two, it says, "You who call yourselves the citizens of the holy city." And claim to rely on the power of Israel, the Lord Almighty is his name. Uh, verse 3, I foretold the former things long ago. My mouth announced them and I made them known. So uh, pretty much, you know, as a matter of fact, if you could get uh, somebody get Isaiah 46. I got it. And, I'm uh, already there. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much a lot of those, <laughs> a lot of when you started like verse, I mean, uh, chapters like 42 up until like chapter 48. Um they have the similar, they have a similar uh, uh, context, okay. But um, yeah, if you could, if you could get verse ten. Cool. Oh, this, is, this is Isaiah chapter forty-six, verse ten. It says that I'm gonna start at verse nine. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me, mm -hmm. declaring the end from the beginning. And from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Right. So the most high is showing that, look, these <laughs> idols that y'all are trusting in, they're not able to prophesy and then bring things to pass right which when we read back in uh, Isaiah 48 and go you know on down it's going to continue to uh, expound on that God, I got a quick precept God. this is Psalm chapter 115 I'm going to start at 3 it says but our God is in the heavens mm -hmm. he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased mm -hmm. their idols are silver and gold the work of men's hands mm -hmm. they have mouths but they speak not Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. Mm -hmm. like they have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Mm -hmm. They make they that make them are like unto them. So in everyone that trusteth in them. Mm -hmm. Right. Getting to the point. Yep. It's pretty much dead, man. You know, and a lot of uh, our people idolize, you know, <clears throat> Uh, celebrities and um, you know ways of life, fictitious ways of life. Money, you know, yeah, exactly. The love of money is the root mm -hmm. of all evil. Things they see on social media, and uh, it doesn't lead to edification or or salvation in the slightest. 
and tell yeah. them what's going to happen, you know, in the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. I got to preach that, too, because you were saying how this whole context goes from Isaiah 42 to 48. Mm-hmm. This is Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory will I not give to another. Neither <coughs> my praise to graven images. Yep. Behold, the former things will come to pass and new things do I declare before yep. they spring forth. I tell you of them. Yep, and that's the spirit. That's one of the precepts I had. Oh, okay. And when you go in, no, I mean it's all good because in the, when you go into verse six, it talks about that, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, could you read it again, Balkusha? Did you want to start with that verse eight, eight where I started? Okay. Yeah. Isaiah forty-two and eight. It says, "I am the Lord. That is my name, mm-hmm. and my glory will I not give to another. Mm-hmm. Neither my praise to graven images." Right. So, you know, we got to put ourselves back during that time. Israel was idolizing to the fullest man you know the northern the northern kingdom when you read about uh the kings that were you know alive during that time i mean it all it talks about how every single last one of the kings of the northern kingdom did that which was evil on the side of the most side that's because mm-hmm. they were you know worshiping idols man that's right you know which is why you know ultimately the lord took them down first before uh before he you know took down the uh, the, the southern kingdom you know they got taken taken down um by the assyrians and the lord preserved the southern kingdom um you know from from being taken over by the assyrians man you know of course they got taken over by the babylonians but at least that shows that they were at least trying there were some kings that were you know mm-hmm. trying to trying to do right by the most high right, right. and uh that's why they were able to stick it out stick it out a little bit longer but um i mean they still were got they still got brought down because of idolatry you know and again this can be Compared to today, right. you know, um, majority of our people, you know, because this message wasn't just we, you know, we we know what who who we worship and what not to do and things like that. But a majority of our people, they still out living, you know, living their best life. Oh, as total adults. idolatry, you in know, every single way worshiping themselves. Yeah, social media, just the fact of having uh, views and comments right everybody's like me 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 you, you got average like chicks and i know this is a, another topic thinking they're on a high level just mm-hmm. because they're validated through all of these platforms social media mm-hmm. you know likes yeah. likes mm-hmm. hearts yes. and mo- emojis you know worshiping of yourself man <laughs> yeah it's and say in the last days men should be lovers of, them, of their own selves mm-hmm. right you know, and that's the main idol that people worship now to nowadays is themselves you mm-hmm. know like whatever whatever it is that they whatever it is that that floats their boat whether it be them Worshiping the spaghetti guy, you know, the, mm-hmm. or the, you know, what I'm saying, whatever it is, you know, here in Babylon, it teaches you and promotes for you to do as thou wilt, and mm-hmm. that's the literally people are walking around with that mindset. I'm gonna do what the hell I want to do without mm-hmm. no fear of the Lord. Right, like, mm-hmm. that Megan the Stallion spirit, man, the Cardi B spirit, man. God, I got a precept. Mm-hmm. This is Revelation 13 and three, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. This is going into the revival of the Roman Empire. And the stigma that was going to be placed on it that people was going to follow. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast who was able to make war with him? And we understand that this beast goes into pretty much the system that we see today. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the dynamics that are within the system and what they held on high, it's all idol worship. You know, it's all idolatrous. And Jake are the main ones that are the consumers of it. Everybody consumes it, but when Jake consumes it, you know, everybody else follows after what Jake does. We're the biggest consumers on the planet Earth, pretty much, mm-hmm. you know, but just going into that, they're wondering after the beast, the examples that you brothers brought up. These people are literally wondering after the idols, after the image, mm-hmm. you know, just as those images that didn't speak nor hear, people wandered after it back then. You see it today in modern terminology. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, matter of fact, you got to um, if you could hold Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah 5 and, and 3 again. Kind of, kind Because um, uh, let's read verse 4 in Isaiah 48. It goes into that. Five, 5 and 3, you said? Uh, let, let's read Isaiah first. Um, Isaiah okay. 48 and 4. The next verse, Bible, sir. This is Isaiah 48 and 4. Mm-hmm. Because I knew that thou art obstinate, mm-hmm. and thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass, I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Mm-hmm. Before, right. if I if I may uh, expound on that, you know, when you look into obstinate, it basically means stiff neck, hard headed. You know, that's where that terminology of uh of you know hard headed really you know right. originated from. You know, and um, 
when you read in the NLT, it says Isaiah 48 and 4, for I know how stubborn and obstinate you are. Your necks are as unbending as iron. Your heads are as hard as bronze. So Israel is known for being hard, uh, a stiff necked people, man. You know, was that Ezekiel? Um, three, three. Uh, yeah, three talks about how, you know, if the Lord had sent Ezekiel to another nation, they would, you know, mm -hmm. they would have pretty much adhere to him. You know, but being that they, being that he's sent to a stiff necked nation and stiff necked people, his own people, you know, they're not going to hearken. Yep. You know, the Lord straight up, he's straight up said he's like, if they ain't going to hearken unto you, or if they didn't hearken unto me, they're not going to listen to you. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that's that's just the that's the job of a prophet. You know, like you know, these people talk about, you know, I oh, mean, y'all need to gather more numbers, and y'all need to, y y you know, your organization. You know, we got thousands, we got hundreds of thousands of people, and that's not even what that's not even what this thing of, of ours is all about, man. Right. The Lord has it set up, whereas majority of these people are going to be completely stubborn and blinded to the to the real 100 percent truth, versus of what you know what tickles your fancy. You know what I'm saying? What, what what makes you feel good? You know, the Lord is like, look, the majority of these people are not going to listen to y'all. They don't even listen to me. Just understand that the majority of people are, if 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 you hate it, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because our people hate, our people hate instruction. Prophesy unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. They would rather hear lies than the truth, man. That's right. You know, but Bob Prashad, uh, you got a coffee. You get that. Your mind? Come. Come. You just want to start at two or just go? Uh, verse three. Go straight to three, okay. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 5 and 3, it says, O Lord, uh, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Mm -hmm. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. Right, so even though Jake has been put in <laughs> captivity, you know, and this is prior to them actually, you know, going into, uh, into bondage. Um, but even to this day, we still we still see how stiff necked our people are, man. Majority of them walk by the camps, you know, mm -hmm. when they hear have questions. Even when people, you know, have questions, you know, they don't take our answers seriously, or they, you know, they run out of patience, you know, before we could get to their question. You know, they're not actually uh, considering the seriousness of this word, man. You know, even though, like the scripture said, uh, the Most High has stricken them. Man. So that's why I really. We say all the time that he really dealing with, uh, with only with the elect, with the prophets on his side, man. Because two thirds of Jake not gonna get it, you know. But um, let's continue on that uh, uh, Isaiah, and if somebody else could hold Acts fifteen to eighteen. This is Isaiah oh, forty eight and five. Mm -hmm. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee, before it came to pass I showed it to thee, mm -hmm. lest thou shouldest say my idol hath done them. Mm -hmm. And my engraven image and my molten image hath commanded them. Right. So Jake was, you know, making idols. And when something miraculous will happen, they'll say, oh, you know, <laughs> they'll give the they'll give the honor and the praise to the uh, to the idol, man. <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon, I believe the 14th or the 15th chapter talks about that. 15. Yeah. Talks about how pretty much how foolish it is to uh, to make. I had that. Old, actually. Yeah. I mean, if you, want, you know, if you want to find a good spot get it but how foolish it is to make an idol you know um something that you made and then you worship in your own creation man mm -hmm. you know uh this is wisdom of solomon <clears throat> chapter 15 uh i'll just start it and get to the point uh wisdom of solomon chapter 15 i'm gonna read verse 6 and then jump to verse 15 it says both they that make them uh <coughs> both they that make them they that desire them and they that worship them, talking about idols, mm -hmm. and those who make them, those desire and worship mm -hmm. them, are lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust upon. Right. And so some examples of idols today, um, <coughs> for example, you have those, uh, those uh, Dia de los Muertos, you know, the northern tribe, they, they, they make different idols, you know, during that, during that time, during the time of Halloween, and they'll sell it, they'll have the the shrine in their businesses and you know some people will come and buy it and you know you have people <coughs> idolizing those things you have uh uh basically hispanic uh markets that have all the different type of idols in there man uh uh i mean uh Simiramis, you know or the the virgin the virgin mary you know santa maria Rosary Beach and all that. yeah 
all the, all these things that people you know that's they'll see in the Catholic in the Roman Catholic Church, you know, and uh, they'll actually light incense to the uh, well. They'll you know they'll burn a candle, they'll light a candle, and, and genuflect in front of the in front of that idol, praying to you know they're praying to that guy right. when mm -hmm. it's 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 just a statue, man, a man-made statue. Bro, so, I was at the museum yesterday and I seen so many idols there, bro. Like I was I was just in my mind when I was looking. And I was just like, dang, this is what our people was into. Like, just statues of Buddha. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All these different idols and so-called gods and shrines. And, mm -hmm. and they're just statues. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was just looking. You know, people looking. You know, and I was looking at them. And I was just like, dang, like, our people were really made these things really from the customs of the heathen. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But really really bowing down and praying and lighting incense. And it's just a statue just sitting there. Can't breathe. It's can't candy, move. Man. It's literally you know? dirt that they baked. With paint on it and the thing is people think that you know they don't do that no more but we have tv now see before you had paintings now you have motion pictures right now you have movies now you have you know youtube and things that even young children see and they you know they idolize it you know they grow up you know singing the songs of the these you know pretty much uh, uh celebrities that are put in a position to be idolized you know, American but, Idol, right? Yeah, and all they, yeah, exactly. I remember I used to love watching America. I was watching that shit when I was in first grade. You know, and um, you know, I would love to watch it. But the, everybody is a when you have when you have a a fan. A fan is a fanatic. It's a short word for a fanatic. So you pretty much uh, uh, fantasizing or or idolizing whatever whoever you're a fan of. You know, people say I'm a this you know fan of whatever band or fan of this. That's really that's what you're doing. You're idolizing that when you certain people, obviously, you know, we can say, OK, yeah, we like to listen to a certain type of music or whatever the case is. But people who, uh, you know, be going to some concerts and stuff like that, man, that's really what I go back to. That word fan goes back to fanatic, you know. So um, just making that making the attachment. So like I was going to say, just making that attachment from the old world what's going on back then to what even is going on to this day, man. Like no, you good. I was just gonna finish up with Psalm 15 for you, real quick. Kind. Um, was, I'm gonna jump to verse 15. It says, "For they, uh, for they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods, which neither have the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear, nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. Mm -hmm. For a man made them, and he that borrowed, and he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them." Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. Oh, for example, you got another thing, uh, Tupac, man. That man died 25 years ago. People still, you know, got T-shirts and murals and all these things about uh, things on them. You know, uh, the rapper uh, Young Dolph that just that just got shot and killed, which that was judgment from the Lord. People idolizing him. Right. You know. The jab. <laughs> yeah. Man. They're putting their trust in things that are not the Most High, man. And that's mm -hmm. that's where they err, and that's what causes the Most High to uh, uh, provoke the Most High to jealousy. You know, um, did somebody have that Acts 15 yep, and 18? Acts 15 and 18. Mm -hmm. It says, Knows unto God are all, it says, Known unto God are all his works mm -hmm. from the beginning of the world. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned unto the Most High. Right, so that first part it says, "Known unto the Most High uh, are the works from all of the, uh, from the beginning of the world." We're paraphrasing, you know, and the Most High intentionally, um, you know, used his prophets to say things that were going to happen aforetime, so that the glory could be given to him. The prophets would come in the name of the Most High and say, "This thus saith the Lord," because you, the reason why <laughs> he said, "Thus saith the Lord," was because when it came to pass, the Lord get the credit, you know. Because there were other gods that people were, you know, attributing, mm -hmm. you know, prosperous things um, uh, unto those other gods, man. So that was why, you know, a lot of times I was said, um, uh, you already got Isaiah 42. So let's continue on in verse six. Bible shot. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse six. Thou hast heard, see all this and will not you declare it. I have showed thee. New things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. Right. And if, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and read that in the, um, in the NIV. It says, Isaiah 46 and 48 and 6, 
you have heard these things, look at them all. Will you not admit them? Talking about the miracles and the, you know, the things that the Most High showed to Israel up until that point. It says, from now on, I will tell you of new things, of hidden things unknown to you. So pretty much uh, uh, secrets, you know, that that uh, that Israel hadn't yet heard, man, to prove, and which is a prophecy, to prove that the Most High is the one that is the God to be worshipped. Okay, because again, the, the theme of this chapter is high idolatry that was going on in the nation. Okay, so the Most High was, you know, going to get his credit for what he for what he uh, brought to pass. Yep. And like things like the uh, <clears throat> like the different prophecies that we that we declare today that are a mystery to the average person, you know, like the MOTB, mm -hmm. you know, these different prophecies that are coming to pass. Like, like I know you like to mention this all the time. Like you trying to tell me that John didn't see what's going on. He didn't see the he didn't see the the the, 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 the venom. He, you know what I'm saying? He didn't see this. He didn't see Esau moving forward with the digital with the digital God that he's trying to put forth and literally put an idol inside of you this time. Though. But people think that that's so far fetched. People think that oh, damn, oh, you guys are you guys are crazy. You really think he would do something like that? Like nigga, yes, like mm -hmm. yes, that nigga would. He's trying to go there. Right. He's doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like like, come on, man. You know? Um, Shock, can we uh, keep going in verse 6? Okay, let's do verse 7. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 7. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, least thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that in NIV. It says, They are created now, and not long ago. You have not heard of them before today. So you cannot say, yes, I knew of them. So pretty much, you know, Israel would Israel would say that, oh, I already knew this was going to happen. But it was really a sign from the Most High. So the Most High, he's about to uh, uh, pretty much uh, bring out how uh, uh, King Cyrus was going to, you know, take over the Babylonian uh, uh, Empire, which is a prophecy. So that when it actually happened. You know, which was at this time, this is before the this is before the southern kingdom was even, you know, taken over uh, uh, by Babylon. So this is something that was at that time way off in the future. So where Israel, when they when, when it happened, they would know like, wow, yeah, like that was the Lord, you know, and it's the same thing today. You know, uh, when, you know, Revelation 13 and 16 come to pass, when all these prophecies come to pass that, you know, we're still waiting for. Jay going to be like, damn. Mm. They were right, mm. yeah. <laughs> you know. Interesting fact about um, you know, Cyrus, mm -hmm. uh, Cyrus's grandfather, Cyrus the first, was alive around this time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of them that when that that the scripture came to pass, they might have thought it was talking about his grandfather. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But later on, Cyrus, obviously, as we all know, Cyrus the second was the one that came and did that. Mm -hmm. But just a little fun fact: his grandfather was alive around this time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cyrus knew, like Cyrus knew that that prophecy was about him too. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's heavy, man. Like, and, and people don't like the validity and try to try to deny the validity of the scriptures. When Cyrus was, you know, what I'm saying, got relics and records about him, and you know what I mean, but all the Bible fake, you know, right, right. So over time, really, the Bible continues to increase in validity as the prophecies continue to come to pass. That's why it's so appalling, not appalling, but because the scriptures say that you know they're not going to believe majority of people, but it's like, man, like. After looking at the prophecies and seeing all this actually happen, it's like, bro, like it's, you know, clearly the book, 144 and 0. Never, never has anything been said in the scriptures that was wrong, man. you know, unless it, unless, unless it just hasn't come to pass yet, you know. So, um, you said you got pre step, okay. This is Isaiah 55, uh, outside of verse 10 of the fullness of verse 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Yep. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where, uh, whereto I sent it. Mm -hmm. You want to... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, the word of the Lord, is, it doesn't go off voice. So everything that the Lord says he's going to do, he's going to, he either has done it, mm -hmm. is doing it, 
or is going to do it. Right. It's not no question the fact of the Lord saying something, to, you know, heaven, the, you how about shining out shining the heavens. I forgot, mm -hmm. you know, oh, snap, oh, I did say I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. No, like the Lord said that it's going to accomplish where unto he sends it. Right. And he sends his word unto the prophets. That's why the, us speaking the word of Yahweh Bar Shemel Shah is the greatest weapon that we that we can have. You know what I mean? Because literally with the word going out, it's destroying this kingdom. Right. Because it's the word of the Lord. We're, we're prophesying something that was already written thousands of years thousands of years ago to happen. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's 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 that's, <laughs> that's spiritual power in itself. Yep. Yeah, that's what happened with the nation of Israel. He spoke his word against us, and it came upon us. That's why we're in the condition that we're in today. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and there was a lot of Israelites that didn't believe when they right. heard these words, man. When they heard the prophecies, you know, they were like, "Oh, that's that's not gonna happen." Especially when it was something that you know wasn't wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, they they would say, "Oh, that, that that's not gonna happen." You know, and anything that happened that was good for Israel, they would you know attribute that to these other gods. Right. So the Most High would would throw a curveball in there. He would you know. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, praise, praise, baby. Exactly. But, you know, that's why, you know, that's why they, they don't want to, they don't want to hear anything outside of prosperity, man. I got one. Hot off the press of you real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 44, verse 17, it says, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven yep. and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of, of Jerusalem. And that shows you that's what Jake was doing. Now, you know, Jeremiah was after Isaiah. So the idolatry did not stop after this message was sent out, mm -hmm. which ultimately led to, of course, the captivity of the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. But that lets you know, man, that Jake did not give a damn. And I was thinking about putting that on there on the uh, list of precepts, but I'm glad you brought that out. Is there, uh, I think it's two verses, right? Yeah, it's a little more. It says, For then have we plenty of victuals, and, and were well, and saw no evil. Yeah, yeah. so they were saying that, oh, when we was worshiping these God, these other gods, we had, we had food, we didn't see no evil, everything was good. Just like the people now that say, oh, man, shoot, I, I've been eating bacon, you know, since I was three. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can run a mile in seven minutes. I'm good. Right. You know? Mm. I can, you know, I've been praying to Jesus. My grandma been praying to Jesus, and and you know somebody gave her a hundred dollars yesterday, right. not knowing that you just provoking the Most High for anger uh, to anger, man. Mm -hmm. And just because a sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily, you think that you're gonna just be able to get away with the madness that you've been uh, 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 perpetuating forever and ever? Christmas trees, people putting their Christmas trees up. It's people right now, millions. I'm sure probably a million people right now putting up their, putting up a damn Christmas tree, man. Or it's already up. Yeah, or it's already up. Mm -hmm. You know. Putting them up in their bedrooms and their bathrooms, <coughs> going in. Okay, that's modern day idolatry, man. Whenever you finish, yeah, every verse eighteen it says, "But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, excuse me, but since we left off, or pretty much meaning stopped, mm -hmm. since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour our drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine." Right. So they blame. So they blame the mm -hmm. their lack of prosperity on the fact that they haven't been uh, on fire enough for their idols, man. <laughs> Which that's completely backwards. Right. But that just shows you how bugged out Jake was, and they're still they're still bugged out, man. Mm -hmm. Same spirit of Jake in the wilderness. It, yep. Same yep. Idols are and, on and, high and, level now. Mm -hmm. yep. So Jake think they got even more power, you know. <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's really the same thing when you think about it. But I'm glad you mentioned that point, Shar, because the, the scriptures, this this uh, chapter goes into what you just said. Come. Um, but uh, you say you have one, you have a come? Yeah, I got a quick question. Uh, Isaiah 29 and 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near with me, or so, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men, mm -hmm. which it goes into all the idolatry and just that legacy, you know, of just all of these things that outside of the most high, you're giving credit and honor for, you mm -hmm. know, instead of the most high that created you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
right? Their heart was far from the man. Was far was far from the Most High. But they'll give the illusion that <clears throat> somehow that they they praise in the Heavenly Father, right? You know, exactly. And everybody is like the whole you know community is under that impression. And it's like, bro, like y'all are going off. Like, <laughs> and the prophets is like, look at them crazy. But the prophets getting looked at crazy because they're you know the few people that's actually right with the Most High. You know, right. so. Um, was that it on that? Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's continue in uh, verse 8, Balkashashar. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 8. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knewest not. Yea, from the time that thine ear was opened. Was not opened. Yeah, it was not opened. Mm -hmm. For I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, I'll read it in the, um, in the NLT. It says, yes, I will tell you of things that are entirely new. Things you never heard of before, for I know so well what traitors you are. You have been rebels from birth. So pretty much, man, again, this was intentional uh, uh, that the Most High was basically saying things that had never been done or, you know, pretty much prophesying, you know, and, and idols can't prophesy, man. So that's that was the, you know, the argument. This is the Most High pleading with Israel, man, before he actually just. Wiped it, wiped them out, and and dusted them off, and and then actually the next verse go into that because you would think at this point it's like, well, damn, most high, you know, I'm surprised he didn't just dust them off right then and there, but the next verse goes into why he didn't, mm -hmm. you know, why he didn't do that, and also too, just with verse eight, it says, uh, uh I knew that thou wouldst do very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. That mm -hmm. showed forth that like, we would have to have a savior at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We, we, we were called from the womb We were already, you know, pretty much called from the womb To be tainted, if you will <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But this this proves that there would have to have been a savior to come You know, a transgressor from the womb Yep That makes you think of, like, the scripture says the, uh, That the wicked are estranged from the right. womb Right, that's, yep, exactly You know, yep They already set forth, you know what I'm saying? Two thirds, so, man You know That's why, you know You, you introduced this, you know, this concept of, of, of Hundred percent truth to certain people, and demons demons come out of them, man. You know, and they they you know them demons trying to hold hold firm on that uh, you know, on that person, you know, bugging them out, you know, getting them to <coughs> try to change the subject or whatever the case may be. You know, it's because you know a lot of these people aren't you know they're not destined to get it on this side, man. You know, so uh, we can go on to the next next verse, Bob. And then if somebody could hold Ezekiel twenty. And verse 7. Okay. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee. Right, because ultimately, at the end of the day, the Most High's um, glory is going to be shown in Israel, right? Just like when you read uh, St. John chapter 17, you know, um, Yahweh Shai asked the Most High for the, uh, to glorify him, you know, with the, uh, with the glory of that he got from the beginning so that he so that the most high could be glorified you know mm -hmm. and so that's right the elect are going to be glorified through Yahweh Shai and those are the only ones that's going to get it on this side man that's why we keep constantly drilling it you know but it's, it's, the, it's the truth if all Israel was going to get right on this side you know hey wouldn't be no two-thirds man but we need ultimately we need a, a, a mercy and salvation because that's not going to happen, you know, mm -hmm. two thirds of Jake are not going to get it, you know. So um, did you read? Did you finish the? There's a little more to okay. verse nine. I'm going to start at the top again. Mm -hmm. For my name's sake, will I defer mine anger and for my praise, will I refrain for thee mm -hmm. that I cut thee not off. Right. And in the uh, NIV, it says so as to not destroy you completely. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's talking about that remnant, man. Yep. Really, because Israel definitely got judged. And, um, you know, a lot of a lot of Israelites got put to death, you know, during this time period that we're reading about. Um, but the elect, you know, the one third, ultimately, they, you know, they had that they had that mercy. Um, I got but, a quick. Oh, so I can oh no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. That was it. It's Isaiah one and nine. Except the Lord of hosts had left us. So like you. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Mm -hmm. We should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like Gomorrah. Right. You got it, brother. Yep. Exactly. Because, you know, if it wasn't for the think about think about uh, the account when Moses, you know, pleads for the most high not to mm -hmm. <laughs> not to uh, uh, destroy Israel. 
in its entirety and bring back the whole nation through him. You know, he pretty much, you know, he pretty much reminded the most high of the uh, promise that he made, you know, to, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you know. And so if it was if it was, you know, uh, uh, Genesis six, hey, man. Mm. Jacob be out of there. <laughs> we seen already what the Most High did, man. What he's capable of. So you know, it's really a wonder. Like the Lamentations uh, talks about. You know, uh, uh, matter of fact, let me see if I can find. It. I think it's in the third chapter. Pretty much, it talks about how the mercy of the Most High every morning. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I got a quick one. While you're looking for, I, it. I found this. Slide. Okay, real quick. No, it's, you got it. You uh, got it. Lamentations three and twenty two. It says, "It is of the Lord's of Yahweh's mercies that we are not consumed, because of His compassions. Because His compassions fail not; they are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness." So, if the Most I wasn't faithful to His word, man, hey, Israel would be out of there, man. Because mm -hmm. uh, the scripture saying in Ephesians the second chapter that we were, you know, pretty much once. Uh, uh, Walking in, you know, according to the ways of the world as well, man, before we came into the um, faith. That's right. You know, so. God, hey, the scriptures even say that he puts his word even above his own name. Mm -hmm. Going into the word that he had spoken, he, he had already promised it. So he has to, he has to, uh, it has to come to pass. Right. This is Isaiah 43 and 25 and 26. I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake yep. and will not remember thy sins. Mm -hmm. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. When you go into that, pretty much like you mentioned how Moses had to remind the Lord, not that he forgot, you know, but he had put him in remembrance going into the words that he already declared as pertaining to Israel and how they were already the chosen seed and how they cannot be destroyed because he had already made a promise. He had already promised according to his will. Right. You know. And that's what the Lord wants us to do on occasions. Put him in remembrance. Right. Pray unto him. Bring those scriptures and those examples out. Lord, mm -hmm. you said this. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And uh, and ultimately, those new bodies, you know, we're starting with the uh, laws being, you know, written in our inward parts. That's that's for his name's sake as well. That's mm -hmm. for the glorification of the Lord as well. That's right. Because we're going to be those beacons of light for all of the rest of the, the, you know, the heathen to see. This is how life is supposed to be lived. This is... The most high is the one to be worshipped. So in the kingdom of heaven, it's not going to be, you know, no uh, high level of idol worship like you have today because it's going to be obvious representatives of the most high on earth constantly reminding the heathen. And they're going to have to give sacrifice. They're going to have to follow the high holy days. They're going to have to speak the, uh, the language. They're going to see the immortality of the elect, you know, of the nation of Israel in, 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 in its entirety. And they're going to have no choice but to acknowledge that the most high is responsible for that, man. That's right. Yeah, the scripture say that they're going to look upon us and they're going to say, uh, they're going to give supplication to us sure, and say, surely yeah, God yeah. is in thee. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Yep. These are the people that, the, these are the people that the Lord, these are the, so the, these are the people that the Lord chose to be his people, man. And it's going to be evident. Ain't going to be no question about, you know, you ain't going to be no question of, oh, is that an Israelite there? I don't know. <laughs> nah, you're going to know. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Kind. Um, what verse were we on? Verse, verse uh, 11. I'm sorry, verse 10 now. Did you get um, Ezekiel 20 yet? Or somebody had uh, Ezekiel 20? Yeah, yeah, let's get that. Follow shot. What verse? Verse 7. And 7, and seven through um, 9. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 7. It says, it says, uh, Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. Mm -hmm. mm. I am the Lord, Yahweh, your power. Mm-hmm. But they have rebelled against me and when I hearken unto me. Right. So you would think, man, that, you know, after the rich history, when I, man, when I found out that, that we were the people that the Lord brought out of Egypt, you know, because you don't, you know, you know about it when you, you know, grow up and you know, talk about the story of the flood and the story of, uh, you know, Moses, you know, parting the sea. But when you really, when you really take hold of that as your, and embrace it as your own history, you know, you have a sense of, you know, entitlement in a positive way to that and you know, a sense of responsibility, man. You're like, man, you know, well, this, you know, the Lord delivered my people. What's so special about me? You start inquiring more and more. That's supposed to be, you know, uh, the reaction when, when we read these stories. But Jake knew this and took all this stuff for granted, man. And it's because they, they didn't know the atrocities of, of, of slavery to the extent of what we have here, you know, in America or what we experience here in America. Uh, even even the Babylonian and the 
in the Medo Persian and the Grecian and in the, the Roman Empire, man, all those all those um uh, captivities were punishments, man. Every single last captivity that Jake was in, starting with the Egyptians, going all the way down to now, every captivity got worse. Yeah. And the Lord, the Lord, the captivity got worse, and the the deliverance of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai separated more and more and more. Like we started judges, like the Lord kind of, you know, they, they was slaves for like what thirty seven, years. Seven. It started like eight years. You know, eight years, years. Yeah. and then you know, eventually it got to the point where. Like literally, you know, we we got completely detached spiritually. Like we for three hundred and fifty years, we was just out of there. Didn't know who we was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now the destruction this time. You know, the Lord woke us up. You know, in the destruction this time, the Lord finna let two thirds of Israel have it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be far worse than anything that the world has ever witnessed. Yep, it talks about that in Revelation fourteen verse nine, where it says. The, the uh, cup of the Most High's indignation is going to be pour, poured out without mixture. So all these previous times, it was diluted a little bit, you know, because uh, Daniel 12 and 1 talk about how it's going to be a time like never before, you know, in the, in the times that's to come when, when Jacob's trouble is in his, in his peak climax. So that full cup of indignation of the Most High hasn't even been experienced yet, man. So that's that's... That's a heavy burden that, that Jake's gonna have to pay, man, for not listening to the word of the Lord. You know? And this was and it's the same sentiment that was going on back in what we're reading in Isaiah 48. You know? Continue on that in Ezekiel. Time, uh, Ezekiel 20 and 8. It says, But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. Mm -hmm. They did not, they did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, mm -hmm. neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them. To accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. but I wrought, but I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen mm -hmm. among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, right. and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Right. So uh, essentially, you know, at the end of the day, when when uh, uh, the Lord said, I mean, when Pharaoh. Uh, um, said okay you know y'all can go and worship the Lord after the after the plagues um, had hit you know it was undeniable that it was the Lord and he had even you know he he had even acknowledged it even before that you know you know it was people that you know was trying to say oh you know this is just happenstance but after a certain amount of plagues that hit they were like man surely this is this is from the, the, the finger of the most high by the hand of the most high you know and so it's going to be the same thing when we're delivered from this uh, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, it's going to be undeniable to, that the Lord did this, man. And that the Lord is dealing with uh, those men that were prophesying it, uh, uh, you know, before it actually came to pass. Okay? Um, that was it on that end of Ezekiel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue on in verse 10, Bakusha. And if somebody could hold uh, Psalm 66, verse 10. As well. This is easy. Uh, not Ezekiel. Oh, you said continuing Ezekiel? No, no, no. Uh, continue in Isaiah. About okay. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. Mm -hmm. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Mm -hmm. For right. my, oh, uh, go ahead. You can continue on. For my nah, own that's sake. That's heavy, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to. Well, I called us back, but he said, okay, I'm not going to give you all the riches that you want tangibly, but I'm going to put your ass through all this affliction mm -hmm. to prove to you. You got to show me that you want me back. You want to prove to me, man. Mm -hmm. So we got to go all this stay out. This, man, that's heavy, bro. Yep. And uh, in the NLT, it, said, it says the furnace of suffering, man. So pretty much that is uh, uh, correlating with uh, Zechariah 13 chapter. You know, how the uh, one third are going to be brought through that mm -hmm. uh, refining process. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to be te uh, tested and tried, oh. you know. Mm -hmm. Man, it's uh, an honor to be chosen. And like the scripture said, the Lord chose us in the furnace of affliction. Mm -hmm. Not everybody not everybody has that opportunity to be chosen to go through this yeah. like us, you know what I'm saying? So even, you know, the fire hurts, it burns sometimes. But it's, a, it's a, you know, at the, when, you, when you look at the end result about it, you know, it, it's made to, you know, burn the impurities out of you so that the Lord wants you to become a better man. Right. You know, and not everybody was chosen for that. You know, you know, we've been chosen to go through the fire. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just we hoping that we're chosen to literally come through the fire. Man. Yep. And, and we're yep. burnt offering, if I could say, like it talks about in Wisdom of Solomon 13 chapter. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, Many are called, few are chosen. Real quick, because think how long it took for us to get this word, bro. Because right here, 
1 Samuel 3 and 1, it said, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Mm -hmm. This word only come around so often, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And look, we got it now. These are some very precious moments for us to be able to, to get this word because it don't come around as often. Right. And people don't even take account of that. Like the Bible be all these years, you can just get the word in time. But to understand it wasn't coming up in time. Right. right. Now yeah. it's good. So that's, that's right. Was, that's right. That was it. Yep. Kind. Um, you got Isaiah, I mean Psalm 66. I got it. Okay. okay. Verse 10. 10. Verse, okay. Verses 10 through 12. Bible push out. Psalm 66 and 10. It says, For thou, O uh, power, has proved us, thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Mm -hmm. Thou broughtest us into the net, thou latest affliction upon our loins. It, it says, says, The Lord brought us into the net, man. So he allowed us to go into captivity. Right. Was that in itself, that concept in itself? Is a uh, you know a tough cookie for a lot of Jakes to uh, to swallow, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. They think that it's just you know, they, I don't, Jake don't know what the hell is going on, man. man. Really, if you you know, because I I'm I'm thinking about when I was in the world before I knew this, I didn't even consider why we went into slavery. I just right. was like, well, damn, we were slaves. We ain't no more. You know what I'm saying? Let's go get some hoes. But now it's like, nah, this is this was all written for the intention of the elect to look at that and say, wow. Yep. We really messed up. <laughs> and we can have 360 degrees of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of righteousness and wickedness, too. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And only only the elect are going to understand this, man. Because we're going to be judges in the, in the next rulership, you know? That's right. So it had to come full circle that way. We had to actually go through that experience. Yep. You know? Okay. You keep reading on that. 12, sure. Yep. Uh, verse 12 in Psalm 66, it says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us us out into a wealthy place. Right. It says thou causes men to ride over our heads. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, you know, getting trampled on, you know, getting spat on. Sold getting on auction and blocks. Man, just, you know, basically made uh, uh, lowered in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Considered three-fifths of a human being, all this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. They gave uh, 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 women the... Uh, the right to vote before they gave niggas the right to vote, man. Mm -hmm. That shows you how low that they value the, uh, you know, so-called Negro, Latino, Native American. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Isaiah 51, uh, the point is at verse 23, I started verse 21. It says, therefore, now, therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, That's it. and thy power that pleaded the cause of, the, of his people, behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. And that lines up with Lamentations, uh, the fourth chapter. How, uh, yeah, like the scripture says that we're not going to go back into captivity after this last one. Mm -hmm. But rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, because the cup is going to be passed unto you. Verse 23. But I will put it into thy, excuse me, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Right. So it says, I have put the cup of indignation into hand into the hand of them that afflict thee. So mm -hmm. like the scripture say in Revelation, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. See. Those that afflict us are the self proclaimed white man. You know? And when you don't put any uh identif identifiers, you know, in the prophecies you know, it's just, it, it becomes bland and, you know, Vague yeah, and yeah, it's something that you no just like, well, to yeah. pinpoint what's what, yeah. yeah, but, but now that we understand who, who this is talking about, who the Israelites are, we know who, who was our oppressors, you know, and so now we have that hope and that confidence to say, okay, well, you know, we've been trodden underfoot, um, you know, amongst the, amongst the side of the nations. Now it's time for the elect to be risen up, starting with the elect to be risen up through that, uh, uh, praise. And, and honor and reverence that they give uh, to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and then of course the rest of the two thirds on the uh, on the other side. But again, man, this is something that was being highlighted way back before before even the Northern Kingdom was even taken over. So this is the point of the Lord prefacing it with, "Hey, these other gods, they don't know nothing. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you some stuff that's gonna happen in in the end times." You know, so uh, that was it in that uh, Psalms 66. Uh, let's do we reverse 11 in Isaiah 48 yet? Uh, not the whole thing. Okay. 
This is Isaiah 48, 11. Mm -hmm. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. Mm -hmm. For how should my name be polluted and I will not give my glory to another? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, in the NLT, it, it says, I will not let my reputation be tarnished. So he highly values how he's uh, um, perceived even amongst the other nations, man. Mm -hmm. Think about like, you know, anybody that is a part of your household, if you have a child or a woman, whatever the case is, you don't want, you know, that child to bring home bad grades or, uh, you know, uh, uh, get a get a phone call from the administrator saying that they've been acting out in class. That puts a bad rap on your name, you know. So we have to, as representatives of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, we got to make sure that we are on point, you know, when it comes to worshiping the Lord and, you know, just representing him in, in general because he has put his name on us. The scriptures say uh, that, um, that the Lord is our husband, man. So we got to, you know, we got to act like it. Um, All right, appreciate it. Okay, go ahead. Baruch chapter 4, verse 3. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Hmm. You know, and that's Jake trying to allow the, you know, trying to allow the heathen to come and be a part of the blessing, you know, have the uh, have access to immortality, you know, to the to the blessings of the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jake, Jake trying to allow Jake trying to have the heathen be joint with them in that. And the Lord said, look, I'm not. He he, he said uh, and I would not give my glory into another. Mm -hmm. He's only going to give his glory into Israel, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so kind. that, you know, that lines right up with how these niggas be thinking, man. Kind, kind. Yep, that was it. Okay, let's uh, read verse twelve. It kind of transitions now into, you know, pretty much the Most High uh, expressing his his love for Israel and, and saying, saying, "Look, come back, you know, get back in the good graces." So uh, we continue on that Isaiah Bible Kusha. This is Isaiah chapter forty eight verse twelve. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am He. I am the first. I am the last. Mm -hmm. I also am the last. Mm -hmm. Which we know that Yahweh, hey, even Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, man, he was there from the foundation of the earth. You know, the scriptures say he's the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega. Hey, that proves that that's Yahweh Shai speaking. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. He's the word of the Most High. Hey, well, the Alpha and Omega. Wait till you see the next verse. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 13. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. Mm hmm. And my right hand had spanned the heavens. Mm -hmm. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Right. So everything, even the celestial uh, ordinances, man, are are have been committed to the to the hands of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. Mm -hmm. You know, every time the sun sets, mm -hmm. you know, if if the Lord didn't set it up to where the stars are supposed to subsequently come out, they wouldn't be coming out, man. Mm -hmm. You know. Go ahead. Okay. Psalm thirty-three, verse six: By the word of Yahweh were the <coughs> were the heavens made, mm -hmm. and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. The mm -hmm. worlds. You got it. Out. And we are who's the breath of, of the Lord's mouth? It's Yahweh, man. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. uh, Psalm thirty-three, verse six: It says, By the word of Yahweh were, all, were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the host of the heavens also consists of the angels too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. yeah Yahweh Shai. You know Yahweh Shai. Created the angels. John, the first chapter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got one, Bonnet? Go. Okay. It's Proverbs 8 and 30. I'm um, reading the NLT. It says, <clears throat> I was his architect at his, at his side. I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence. Mm -hmm. You see? That's it. Architect. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs. Yeah, that's got to be a uh, spirit. I was thinking about Proverbs 8. And uh, even when you read, uh, when you get that, that last word in the. Uh, in Isaiah 48 and 13, in the Hebrew, that word together is the Hebrew word yechad, which means uh, unison. You know, so they're in a they're in agreement with they're pretty much under the jurisdiction of Yahweh Shai. Right. They're in complete order. Exactly. One, mm -hmm. Even the heavenly bodies. That's why when you read Isaiah 4, so like it, uh, when you read Isaiah the fourth chapter, it talks about how the sun and the moon, pretty much the glory of that is not going to be. It's not going to compare to our glory mm -hmm. because when you look at the sun and the moon, they're majestic. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the sun and the moon and the stars and you look at humans, us people, mm -hmm. you be like, dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, they, they are majestic. That, right. That's the work of, but that's the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And they're in complete order day in and day out. They do not exactly. disobey the commands of the Lord, but just imagine us. Right. Whereas our glory is going to surpass that. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Imagine if the sun bucked up when the Lord had caused the sun to, you know, 
to stay to stay uh, uh to stay up that extra day. Mm-hmm. You know, if the sun was just like, nah, I'm gonna set. Like, nah, like the Lord <laughs> has complete control over uh uh the the bodies, man. They're in order. The heavenly bodies, they're they're in order, just like the angels. That's right, right. You know, and Joseph's vision he had about um the sun, the moon, and the stars giving obeisance unto him. It likened Jacob to being likened to a heavenly host right there. That's mm-hmm. right. Heavenly bodies right there within itself. Okay. And there's also multiple examples going into it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, that was it on verse 13. We can continue on. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 14. All ye assemble yourselves and hear. Which among them hath declared these things? The Lord hath loved them. He will do his pleasure on Babylon. And, and when it says which among them, it's talking about the idols. Right. You know, which of, which of those uh, idols has foretold the things that the Most High uh, ha- has said up until this point and that is going to, uh, he's going to, and he's going to continue to say, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, did you, could you finish, can you read verse 14 again so I could just read the whole thing? Isaiah 48 and 14, all ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them hath declared these things? Mm-hmm. The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you read that in the NLT, it says, have any of your idols ever told you this? Come all you and listen. The Lord has chosen Cyrus as his ally. He will use him to put an end to the empire of Babylon and destroy the Babylonian and destroy the Babylonian armies. So, again, this is a prophecy spoken way back before. Before the Assyrian Empire even took over the northern kingdom, you know, so this is something that when it happened, that held that held weight. That was the intention of it was to hold weight, you know, which is why Isaiah <laughs> quoted it gets quoted so much, you know, in the uh, you know, in the uh, New Testament as well, because everything that he prophesied, you know, that was uh, pertaining to that time, came to pass. Mm-hmm. You know? And really, on a deeper note. You know, with this chapter here, it, you know, goes into, you know, here too. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? The destruction of this place. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. Right. Verse 15. Oh, unless it's a lot. Nope. You, 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 hit it, you hit the nail on the head. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 15. I, even I have spoken. Yea, I have called him. Mm-hmm. I have brought him and he shall make his ways prosperous. Mm-hmm. Come ye near unto me, near ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there I am. Mm -hmm. And now the Lord Yahweh and his spirit had sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am Yahweh thy God, which teacheth teacheth thee to profit. Can somebody get Psalm 61 and 1 real quick? Yeah, I'll just pop in my head. Yeah, I'll give you which, uh, which, oh, I don't know if you want to continue on the verse or him to go straight on. Uh, can you read that verse you just read again? Come. This is verse Isaiah 17. 48 and 17. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am Yahweh, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, mm-hmm. which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Right. And the Most High knows what's best for us, man. He knows uh, what's good for us. He's going to lead us in the path that we need to follow. And... That's something that we already know, but hey, he, he's he's identifying himself, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and so to the point where when Israel would be presented with opportunities to go off, this is supposed to ring in in their heads. This is supposed to ring in our heads that look, Most High is, is he which uh, leads us by the way that that we should go. Just like that woman that came up to the camp yesterday asking about, you know, what what to do if if my uh, if my uh, Exemption, you know, gets gets declined. Follow the Lord. That that was the general message that we uh, that we told her. And this is how you do that. Trust in your trust. trust in the Lord, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, don't lean upon your own understanding. Exactly. Seek the kingdom, and all things gonna be added. Yeah, that means going all day. Yep, man. exactly. I got a quote for you. Okay. Jeremiah six to sixteen. Thus saith the Lord: Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. What is the good way and walk therein? Mm. You shall find rest for your souls. But they said we would not walk therein. Mm. Man, mm. that's Jake's. That's Jake to the T, Jake. man. You know they've been presented, and it's like so disappointing. It's like, damn, you you could make your life so much easier if you just follow the Lord. But we know that that's not what happened, man. But that's why we 
earnestly waiting to get out of here, man, because it's like we can't wait for the two thirds to get it. They're not going to get it. They're a necessary evil. The two thirds are necessary for the salvation of the nation of Israel because there has to be a distinction. There has to be a distinction between who Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has called and those who he hasn't. Mm -hmm. So that you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's even deeper within those who know they're Israelites. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Yep. Uh, you got that Isaiah 61? Mm -hmm. okay, brother. Martha got a precept. Oh, Salah. Okay. This is uh, Psalms 32, verse 8. It says, I will instruct thee. And teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Mm -hmm. You can break it down up. Huh. Like you said, that's um, instruction. You know, and when you get that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, it comes from the Most High. Down, you know, like I say, but we can't get to the Most High, but through the house shot. Mm -hmm. And like you say, once you get that wisdom and knowledge, it's going to teach you and guide the way where we need to go. And keep us from that fire and the water that's on each side, as it refers to uh, what is that Second Ezra seven, okay. around the fifty sixth verse. So we spoke that He's going to keep us in that straight gate, that straight way. Yep, He's the door that's right. that leads to the Most High. You can't go up any other way, man, or you, you'll be found as a thief, like the Scripture says. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Jake right. don't want to go through that 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 way, because doctrine goes back to a particular way of teaching, also. When you're talking about Israelites who know that they Israelites, you know. Some Israelites don't want to go that particular way, you know. Right. Most. Most. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's too hard. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they just don't see the vision. Yeah. Um, that was it on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's get that in Isaiah 61. This is Psalm 61, you said, verse 1. Oh, yeah. I, Isaiah 61. Oh, did I say Psalms? Yeah. yeah. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. the same 61. thing with Isaiah. Damn. <laughs> That's my, I, mean, I, I do it all the time. Yeah. Isaiah 61 and 1. Yeah, yeah. I video and I quote something that is really Psalms, but not Isaiah. Man. It says, the spirit of Psalm, excuse me, Isaiah 61 and 1. It says, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me. Because Yahweh hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, in the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Right. And uh, the scriptures also say that uh, pretty much roughly paraphrasing that uh, there is no need uh, for a physician for those that are, are already healed, but those that are sick, you know, and even though all of Israel is sick, you have Israelites that don't think they're sick, you know, and they're not looking for help. They're not looking to be healed. The whole head is sick. Right. <laughs> yeah, even, yeah. Even though the whole head is sick, you know. But, uh, you know, you have Israelites, the same thing. They don't think that they're captives. They think that, you know, this is the, uh, you know, land of the free and the home of the brave. And, uh, you know, the land of opportunity is equal for everybody. But, hey, man, pretty soon you're going to see that unless you take that chip, you ain't, you ain't going to be able to do nothing, man. You already can't damn near do anything uh, without the Vanessa, man. That's how they that's how they that's what they're transitioning to. Um, the New World Order, man, NWO agenda. So, um, that was it on that. Okay. And so let's go back uh, to. Oh, and if you hold Psalms eighty-one, um, let's go back to Isaiah Bible This is Isaiah chapter forty-eight, verse um, fifteen. Isaiah chapter forty-eight. It says, "I even I have spoken; yea, I have called him; I have brought him, and he shall make his ways prosperous." Oh, really? I already read this, but I read it again. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there I, there am I, and now the Lord Yahweh and his spirit hath sent me, mm -hmm. thus saith Yahweh, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am Yahweh thy God, which teacheth thee the prophet, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened unto my commandments, mm -hmm. then had thy peace been as a river, mm -hmm. and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Right. And so let's let's get that in uh, Psalms 81 and verse 13. Psalm 81 verse 13. It says, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me mm -hmm. and Israel had walked in my ways. Mm -hmm. I should uh, continue. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Read, read through 14. Bible All right. Verse 14. I should I should soon I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. Right. So we really. You know, uh, played yourself, you know, uh, what, uh, blocked our blessings, all that, all them terminologies of, you know, you blew it. You know, we done messed up 
to where we could have had it a lot easier. Of course, it was all, you know, everything that's happened up to this point is predestination. But, you know, even in, take, for example, the, uh, the wilderness, man. We took, we were in the wilderness of 40 years. The Lord had us in the wilderness of 40 years just to purify us when the actual journey could have been done in a fraction of that time, man. A, a, a minuscule decimal point of that time. But it was to purify us. It was to purge our impurities. You know? So we ain't going to be able to, you know, get into the into them chariots until we conquer particular demons, even amongst the body, man. You know? So uh, that was the point on that. Let's continue on. Verse 19, Bible shot. Isaiah 48 and 19. Thy seed also had been as the sand mm -hmm. and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. Mm -hmm. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Right. And that's what happened to a lot of Israelites, man. You know, they, you know, family, their family name was cut off. You know, we see examples of that in uh, the book of Ezra, you know, and uh, also the book of uh, Nehemiah, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. You know how there, there was no, uh, their names were not found in the registry, man. Yep. You know? And they weren't able to, you know, to do the uh, uh, keep the uh, the priestly duties. But that happened to all of all us of now. Us, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, when you see when you read this and see the the position of Israel really could have repented and and been good. To now, it's like, damn, we we messed up big time. Mm -hmm. We've been through five captivities since this was written, mm -hmm. and Jake's still going off. Don't get it. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's like, man. When you understand that from the Lord's perspective, it's like, well, shit, how many how many chances do you need? Every time I punish you, you get you get more and more rebellious. You know what? Mm -hmm. Just going to have to just rewrite the code, man, and give them the, you know, give them the new hearts, man. You do DNA structure. Right. Exactly. Uh, let's continue. It's like two more verses. Isaiah 48 and 20. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with the voice of singing, declare ye. Mm -hmm. Tell this. Utter it even to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing, man. Yeah, to man. the ends of the earth, we are here proclaiming that hey, Babylon the Great, the daughter of uh, of Babylon, the mother of Harlots, is going to is gonna fall, you know, and we're supposed to get our minds from, you know, being invested in this place so that we can uh, uh, get the hell up out of here, man. That's right. That you also know? shows, Salaki, bro. Mm -hmm. You was about to say something. No, 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 I was thinking Micah 2 and 10, but you got it. That also shows you, and I got a precept too, mm -hmm. that also shows you that that is part of the gospel. Yep. You know, to go against Babylon, to separate yourself from it, mm -hmm. all that's part of the gospel right there. Right. You know, shows you it ain't just from what these Christians are saying. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Right. Shaking mm -hmm. our hands at the gates of the nobles. That's right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Proclaiming their downfall, man. Mm -hmm. Setting up the banner of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Okay. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, how the angel gave us the, the gospel to preach. Mm -hmm. and that, that part of that everlasting gospel was what? Chanting down Babylon. That's, that's right. right. That's right. You know, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm hmm. That's right. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Man. So all these things are going to be made manifest according to the scriptures, what the Lord commanded his prophets to say. Okay. That uttering. Because even going into that in Isaiah 40, uh, 48, it said he would make utterance from the ends of the earth. Yep. But when you go into that word utterance, pretty much I'll say it in the Greek. You know, you got the word logion. All right, which literally goes into the prophecies and the law and such. So all that was going to be declared in the ends of the earth. You read this in Matthew 24. It says, until it shall be a witness, I believe. Uh, a witness. When you go into that, that literally goes into a testimony. That's right. The testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. You know? Okay. Yep. So it's all links up. You know, yep. New Testament and Old Testament. You got it. Oh, hey, Yahweh Shai said that in Matthew 28, as they said, that, as they call it the Great Commission. He said, Lord, mm -hmm. I will be with thee even until the end of the world. That's right. You know, he said, go and profess and teach them what you've heard from me. You know, so it's that same, it's the same message, mm -hmm. <laughs> ultimately, at the end of the day. Yep, we were going into that last night in uh, 1 John chapter 4 and, and chapter 5, mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. saying that you can't worship the most, you can't worship the most high except you go through the sun, man. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the son was given the words of the most high and says, no man knoweth the father but me and no man knoweth me but the father, man. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he to whomsoever... Uh, uh, the Most High shall reveal it, or the, 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 the yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> whoever is revealed to, uh, everybody else, like the scriptures say, and the rest were blinded. That we see, we see that, we see that. 
You know, Man. you so, can't know your, you cannot know your how. <laughs> you can't know your how except your how shall reveal the heavenly father to you because that's how your how set it up. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's right. Hey, that's why Yahweh Shai said in John 17, I have declared thy name unto them. You Man. know, <laughs> it's only more than just the name Yahweh, but it's a whole legacy and reputation that's tied behind that name mm -hmm. for them to truly know. Yep. Everybody knew the name Yahweh back then in Israel, mm -hmm. but they didn't know him by the reputation. That's right. They cast him off. They didn't even mm -hmm. want to know him. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's finish. Let's, let's read verse 19 again. Verse 19, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 20, verse 20 slow. Slow. All good This is Isaiah 48 and 20 Go ye forth of Babylon Flee ye from the Chaldeans With a voice of singing Declare ye, new song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth Say ye Yahweh hath redeemed his servant Jacob mm -hmm. And they thirsted Not with Salakia And they thirsted Not when he led them through the deserts he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claved the rock also, and the waters gushed out. Man, yep. he that believeth on me in the scriptures that said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out, of belly, that, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Gosh, That's right. And that rock is Yahweh shall. Exactly. Gosh. Yep, I'm going to get this uh, precept in Isaiah 44 and 22. My man. Yep. It says, uh, actually, I'll start verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have and so after all this stuff that we did, you know, to transgress the Most High, he still is not going to uh, forget his people, man. That's mercy. That's nothing but mercy, man. It says, uh, verse 22, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. Just like how the bright the sun is when ain't no clouds in the sky. But guess what? When it's, when it's clouds, it's dark as hell. And that's how the most I blotted out our transgressions, man. Wow, just a, 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 a mm -hmm. little light bulb just Got hit. It. it says he claved the rock and the waters gushed out. Mm -hmm. You know, the rock was split and water came out. Mm -hmm. Made me think about Yahweh's size crucifixion. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. When he was pierced, was crazy. he was claved, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. blood and water gushed out of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and Paul clarifies it in First Corinthians 10, as the brother quoted, that that rock represents Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, you know, just mm -hmm. wanted to share that, you know. It was a, it was a flinty stone. It was mm -hmm. a rough rock. Yeah. Well, that's how we're going to be delivered from this Egypt, man. You know, from this wilderness is is through the word of the Most High. The, you know, wisdom and knowledge is going to be stability of our time and strength of our salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is only from Yahweh Shai, man. That's right. That's right. Yep, uh, the verse there lines up with Ezekiel 37. In the valley of dry bones, you know what, what you know, lacking moisture. I mean, it said that breath, but I mean, it's it's equivalent to water as well too. It's, it's, it's that hydration, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Jake dehydrated as hell, man. Mm. That woman at the camp was dehydrated they physically. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Lips were ashy as hell. <laughs> it was an example of camp. There's a woman that came up, she was just coughing, just, 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 just coughing, not even covering her mouth. She just looked dusty. She was ashy. personally, she, she, she. I mean, um, she was purposely doing that. Yeah, she was on purpose. It was dangerous. So Edomite. No, it was it. What did Edomite do? Yeah, what did Edomite? That's what she represented. The stock of the That was that was his side. Uh, uh, what they call it? A uh, sidekick. And she represented Jake in that low state. She was coughing. Hard, bro. bro. <laughs> yeah, that was uh you can finish the last verse and then any brother having the precepts to close out. Verse twenty two, there is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked. Mm -hmm. Unique how he ends it right there right. Uh, within that. <laughs> yep. You know, drop the mic. Yeah. I mean it's short and sweet, but it's you know, again, exemplifying that anybody that doesn't hearken unto what was just said after the after that, after the you know Man. the understanding that was, you know, uh, brought out during during this lesson, man. Hey, most high, the most high. What what more can we say? You know what I'm saying we've done our part. You know, we got the blood off our hands by, you know, warning warning our people, man. This is what happens. We literally have examples. We're living in an example. Our life is an example. Clocking in, going to work, getting flat tires. You know, ha having you know out of order uh, uh, family members, man. Having to deal with these people, all of these things. Is an example of what happens when you don't hearken unto how about you know, shot. You know? So, do any brothers have any points or precepts or anything like that? 
Yeah, I'll get this. Just, okay. Uh, Sirach 17 and 24, it says, But unto them that repent, he granted them return, and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Mm. And this is what our people refuse to do. And they don't even consider that that refusal to do that, it keeps them in the position that they're in, man. It waxes them worse and worse. Okay. You know? Okay. And this has just been the, the legacy of our people until now, until the, the, the elect has awakened in these latter days, you know? Mm -hmm. We're the exception, Lord willing to the rule. Yep. That's right. Yep. So this pretty much, you know, it's just another chapter that set the tone of the book um, of Isaiah. But, you know, Lord willing, this is edifying. My brothers didn't have any other points. You know, with that, uh, you had a precept, sir? No. Okay. Yeah, with that, we may have all, uh, all praise, honor, and glory. To Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles, and that was a great millstone. And peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.